Hello guys, what's up? This is the British Let's Plays here and here I've got some Call of Duty ghost footage for you. Now, I said that I might not actually bring too much more ghost footage onto my channel, but the thing is that, one, I would like to clear off some of the ghost stuff on my hard drive to make some room for um, Battlefield Bad Company 2, which I'm planning to bring very soon. But this video actually is specifically about Call of Duty ghosts, so here we go, some Call of Duty ghost footage. This was actually from day one of the me owning it. I don't actually think I got it day one, I think I bought it maybe day three. However, this was from my very first day of playing, and it was from my very first game using the Remington R5, which very quickly became my favourite assault rifle. So, what this video is about is some of the issues with the PC optimization of Call of Duty Ghosts. I've talked about it before, but as we know, huge amounts of hardware needed to run this, and nobody really knows why it needs so much hardware. There isn't too much in this game, which other games haven't done with less hardware specs required. So that's quite odd, but there are some other issues with it which aren't necessarily just about what's inside your computer. Some of them are what's outside your computer. Firstly, there was ideas of lag and stuff like that, but if I'm honest, that's starting to clear up now. That was just a new game, basically, and that always happens with new games. I'm sure we all remember Grand Theft Auto V, and uh, that was very recently. A bit of a disaster on their part, because I had no idea it would sell as well as it did, even though they knew it'd sell well. But anyways... The issue is mouse acceleration. Now I don't really like to go really deep in depth with specs and PCs and stuff like that too often, but basically whenever you are using the mouse when you are playing the game of Call of Duty Ghosts on the PC, sometimes the mouse sensitivity almost kind of changes. Sometimes you will move it an inch and then you will just do a smooth turn to the left, whereas if other times you will move it an inch and you'll do a 360. It didn't happen too often, granted, but it was still a problem that was there. And also, sometimes it kind of did the opposite. Sometimes I would move the mouse, and my character wouldn't really move at all. And in fact, it really, really annoyed me yesterday, because I was doing a really good game. I was trying to get the Odin strike. I believe it was on like a 13 kill streak, so I needed one more kill since I had Hardline on. And then my mouse just kind of stopped working. And this really annoyed me, because I was very close to getting it, and it was kind of like a mini gaming goal. So... I decided to try something. I decided to try using an Xbox 360 controller while playing Ghost on the PC. And you know what? It works really well. <laughs> it really does. It works extremely well. Incidentally, as I mentioned, this footage isn't using a 360 controller, but if I record new footage, it will probably be, be using the 360 controller. And it's better for a few reasons. The big one is that it doesn't have this problem with the mouse acceleration. It's true, it's not there. You go left, it goes left at the speed you do it. If it, you go right, then it goes right. However, it also has the auto-aim feature. Now, that's quite interesting because normally when you get an Xbox 360 controller and you play on a PC game with it, you still don't have auto-aim. If any of you are not too sure, auto-aim on console is something that first-person shooters really need if they, you want to be able to play them quickly. And it means that when you put your crosshairs near a target, like very near, then it will snap onto the target and track it for a very brief moment of time. And it just make, makes first person shooter games on consoles flow better. And it's on the PC version, and that's very weird. And for some reason, I feel as if I've almost got an edge on people with a mouse, which is very, very bizarre because the obvious war between mice gaming and controller based gaming is quite simply that the mouse is quicker and you can be more accurate with it. However, the controller fits into your hand, you don't have to use a keyboard. So, it's an interesting thing, it really just comes down to how you prefer play, and I personally prefer the keyboard now, I've gotten used to it. However, if you asked me maybe two years ago, I would have said I definitely prefer the controller. But now, I'm in the weird situation where a controller seems to be a better way to play a PC version, simply because of this glitch in the game. If there was no mouse acceleration issues in Ghost, then I would see no point to use a controller, because as I've said, Using a keyboard and mouse, it's quicker and more agile, and you can make small adjustments to your aim much easier than you can with the controller. However, since the auto-aim is present, and there is the mouse acceleration, it's actually better to use to play Ghost using an Xbox 360 controller. Give it a go. You might enjoy it. 
Okay, so thanks very much for watching, guys. This has been the British Let's Plays. This was some Call of Duty Ghost footage, and I was talking about Mice vs. Controller Gaming. So, if you enjoyed this video, please check out my previous video in which I discuss how some herpes had been found on a copy of Fifty Shades of Grey. See you around. British Let's Plays out. Peace.